Good evening and welcome to Pray Vote Stand. I'm your host, Tony Perkins. Tonight, the birth of America. We commemorate it every year on the 4th of July. For generations, American school children learned the Declaration of Independence and what it says about our inalienable rights given to us by God and to be guarded by our government. They studied the Constitution's system of limited government and the separation of powers designed to protect against man's fallen nature. America's story is the story of an imperfect nation seeking the path for a more perfect union. But many American school children are no longer learning America's story, the good nor the bad. In its place, ideologies like critical race theory are taking root in our nation's classrooms, replacing America's story with the story of division. As a high school history teacher, critical race theory is not something that I explicitly teach. Like, I don't teach that term. I don't ever use that phrase. But it's something that's basically woven throughout my entire U.S. history class. It's the idea that, like, the way to solve racial disparities is not to, like, go tell people individually not to be racist. It's to look at the structures and the systems that are in place, especially the laws. This is the story that is being woven into the minds of America's students so that they only see America as a fundamentally unjust, systematically racist, and rotten to the very core of its founding. And when the founders aren't being canceled outright, we're told we must emphasize all their flaws and shortcomings. Uh, that was one of the conclusions drawn by the National Archives Task Force on racism. In a report to the country's top librarian, the task force listed the archive's own rotunda as an example of structural racism. Why? Well, because supposedly it, quote, lauds wealthy white men in the nation's founding because uh, while marginalizing black, indigenous, and people of color, women, and other communities, end quote. The task force also had this to say about the Faulkner murals in the rotunda which depict the writing and adoption of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. Quote, while these massive paintings are historically significant and loved by many, others find them oppressive and exclusionary. The mural, said one respondent to the museum subgroup survey, are an homage to white America, end quote. Now, quite frankly, this is insanity. As Jesus said, Quote, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided falls. This is not mere differences of opinion. This is an effort to further divide our nation. History is now viewed through not the lenses of deeds, good and bad, but rather the color of one's skin. It's no wonder we're seeing increasing hostility against America and its founders among younger generations. An honest look at history does reveal the shortcomings, but it also shows the path of opportunity and improvement. To give us a glimpse of what this path has produced, we'll talk with Dean Nelson, Senior Fellow of African American Studies here at the Family Research Council. And it's not only the founding fathers that the left is trying to recast. America's very history is being reframed by the left in a way that further divides our nation. Why is that? Well, the left needs fragmentation to accomplish what it wants, a complete departure from the moral and transcendent truth that this nation is built upon. They really don't want healing or unity, which is why President Biden, on his first day in office, dissolved the 1776 commission that was formed three months earlier under the Trump administration. Now, the task of the commission was to create a report that would, quote, better enable a rising generation to understand the history and the principles of the founding of the United States in 1776, end quote. And when that report came out, the legacy media called it laughable. You have Mike Pompeo, as I mentioned before, wailing on about wokeism and multiculturalism and saying, why are you so mean to people who own slaves? Be nice to them. You have this 1776 commission, which is a laughable attempt to sort of rip off the 1619 project with a new version of history that says, no, slavery was fine. It's all good. Don't say mean things about our founders. That's laughable. The 1776 commission ripping off the 1619 project. 
Look, if people actually read the report from the 1776 Commission, they would realize that their findings might, might be the one roadmap to bringing unity to our country. Dr. Ben Carson, a member of the commission, will join us this evening to give us his take on the effort to undermine and erase our history, why it matters, <clears throat> and what we can do. And speaking of erasing, you might recall how earlier this year when the San Francisco Board of Education voted six to one to rename 44 schools honoring quote unquote racist historical figures like George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, and Paul Revere, replacing them with people who didn't aid or abet slavery, genocide, or human rights abuses. Even longtime California Senator Dianne Feinstein was going to have her name yanked from an elementary school because she had replaced a Confederate flag that was removed by a protester when she was the mayor of San Francisco. Now, after the controversial decision drew nationwide attention and was criticized for being based on flawed information without insight from historians, San Francisco made a stunning about face the following month. But of course, we've seen similar decisions being made across the country, which begs the question, what makes someone worthy of honor? Now, before the San Francisco Board of Education's about face, the editorial board at the Wall Street Journal had this to say, quote, a name on a school is not a declaration of perfection, and a society that rummages through history to hold those of the past to the woke standards of today will soon have no heroes to honor, end quote. Also, we want to take a look at what the Bible has to say about a people's history. Pastor Carter Conlon will join us to give us some biblical insight on this topic. We'll also ask him to lead us in prayer for our nation. In fact, that's where we're going to start tonight. We're going to open our time together in prayer, asking God's blessing upon tonight. Father, we thank you for this opportunity through technology to join with folks across this country and literally around the world who understand the times in which we live. And Lord, through our understanding, may we also know what to do. We thank you for this country. We celebrate what you've given to us, what you've entrusted to us. We fully acknowledge that we have never been a perfect nation. Uh, and on this side of heaven, we never will be. But we can move toward a more perfect union. We can move toward a nation that more genuinely and honestly reflects your truth in the way we love one another, and the way we love you. And may we see that unity come to this nation again. Bless our conversation tonight. May it honor you and may it encourage and edify all who watch and listen. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> 